updates, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Show your soul spirit by posting your photos in the... See you, Max. Can I adopt you? <laughs> hey, folks, Mr. Bowtie here. Keep banging home that red subscribe button on your screen so that way you can stay up to date on all the great local sports coverage that TV and radio refuse to cover. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Mr. Bowtie1982. It's fun, it's free, and it's safe for the environment. Thank you so much, and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Greg Sherman. 2018 marks a big year in the world of soccer as the World Cup will take place, albeit without the United States. Four years ago, the last time the World Cup took place, not only had San Elizario never won a state soccer championship, they had never won a team state championship in any sport. But since that 2014 World Cup, they have won four straight boys cross country championships under Cesar Morales. And in 2015, the soccer team won the inaugural 4A boys state championship with great players such as Marcus Utihara and Edwin Marquez. This 2018 San Elizario soccer team made it back to Georgetown in the state semifinals. This year's team, though, was much more of a team effort as the Eagles looked for another state championship. When manager Max Sevenfield took over the program in the mid-2000s, he inherited a program coming off a 1-19 season. Now he has set up one of the premier programs across the entire state. Plus, he rocks the aviator sunglasses better than anybody else. One of the things Sevenfield preaches is to have fun, and his pregame is so laid back it takes the nerves out of the players, which gives his teams an extra advantage. One of my personal objectives is to convey confidence I don't need a bunch of nervous kids. They're already nervous enough. We uh, try to have fun, and that, that probably comes across as a little relaxed. We were kind of nervous, but as he always tells us, it's, it's more important to have fun and just go out there and play the game. It definitely helps us uh, that our coach uh, is having fun, and it transmits us to have fun. We have, we have a few players who uh, are funny, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun in, in the buzz on our way here, on our way back. It, it's a lot of fun to come to games like this. San Eli shut out all four of their opponents in the knockout rounds and had allowed only two goals their last 11 matches, meaning their goal was more secure than Fort Knox. Their semifinal opponent was the Madisonville Mustangs. The College Station area team soccer program didn't exist when San Eli won gold in 2015. It didn't take long for the Eagles to force the Mustangs into a big mistake. 14th minute, Jedrick Pantoya dribbled but was fouled by Mauricio Lasseves. San Eli was awarded a free kick and Eric Valdez made it count. Oh! Valdez's kick went under keeper Jesus Martinez and bounced past the senior into the net and quickly San Eli had the lead. It was uh, one of the first attempts on goal and I just wanted uh, to put it on goal. I wanted to kick it with force and uh, fortunately it bounced before the key. it got to the keeper and it went in. San Eli stayed on the throttle most of the match. Valdez with a free kick in the 17th minute. Although it was stopped by Martinez, the Eagles dominated the pace of play the whole 80 minutes and controlled Madisonville's offense like it was a puppet. It took until the 23rd minute for keeper Steve Salice to be needed. Free kick by Las Seves, but Salice with a stop. Tough angle, but the junior made it look easy. He's a great keeper. He has prepared along these three years and of his career, and he's very important to us. He's a great keeper. Later on, San Eli looked for insurance. Free kick by Valdez, but stopped by Martinez. San Eli's speed forced the District 22 champions to constantly foul to prevent easy goals. In fact, they committed 15 fouls in the match. Then it was time for Salais to go to work. 37th minute free kick redirected, but the junior with the easy stop. Right before intermission, Madisonville off the corner kick. Noe Rodriguez's header missed wide, and it stayed 1-0 San Elliot recess. Very reminiscent of three years ago. You know, we those last that last two minutes of the first half really define the game. If they if they tie it up 1-1, they go into the half with the momentum. But uh, we stood 
you know, we stood tall. Great weather brought out more spectators than usual, the two-legged and the four-legged variety. Play during the second half was mainly spent on Madisonville's side of the pitch as San Eli's speed and endurance forced the Mustangs into a defensive posture. Although San Eli didn't have many good scoring opportunities, their opponent was unable to produce an attack at all in the second 40 minutes. It was just a matter of time before the speed of the District 1 champions would finally produce an insurance mark. <laughs> Israel Garcia blew past the Mustang defense, his shot fooled Martinez, and he potted home the put-away tally. The senior actually mistimed his shot as he kicked it a fraction of a second early. By doing so, he actually fooled the keeper as Martinez's motion was going one way and the ball ended up going the complete opposite direction. What would normally be a kicker's mistake turned out to be exactly how the goal was scored. It was just the effort I put into it. I, I just went in and gave him all. And... I'm glad my teammate could assist me in this. Kevin Bentoncourt would put home a goal later on, and the Eagles soared past the Mustangs 3-0 in a contest that wasn't even that close. The Eagles outshot Madisonville 21-10 and posted their fifth straight shutout. When we pass the ball well, you know, we tend to put teams back on their heels, and we, we were able to do that. Now, conversely, you know, there were many moments in that game when Madison came out and, and started touching the ball. And we were back on our heels, but we're organized. It was uh, definitely the preparation. Our coach did a great job in preparing us uh, physically and mentally for this stage. Uh, we're preparing since October, running, doing a lot of physical stuff, and it definitely helped us uh, win this game. One of our objectives going in was to defend with two, a minimum of two, and also you know, and have our pressure and cover. And we did. And I think uh, number three stepped up very well today. And well, we just, you know, we won. What can I say? The gold medal match was a battle for 4A royalty. San Elizario took on Palestine, the 2016 4A boys soccer champions, and the alma mater of one Adrian Peterson. The Wildcats came in with a perfect 35-0 record and had won 20 straight matches by at least two goals. They beat Progresso in the semis and beat Madisonville in the regular season, meaning they had a chance to defeat all semifinalists if they could win the final. A big crowd from El Paso made the 11-hour bus ride for the final they nearly got to see Palestine end San Eli's long shutout streak. Opening seconds give and go by Palestine, but the round object knocked away at the last second by a San Eli defender. Third minute, Palestine's Javier Leonor's shot stopped by Salais. After surviving the early shots by the District 15 champions, it was time for the offense to go to work. Fifth minute, Israel Garcia ding-donged one off the plastic post. Though the shot didn't go in, it did set the stage for San Eli to begin attacking in the first half. An attack that wouldn't end until the El Paso area team potted a goal. 18th minute, Martin Rodriguez took a pass from Alexander Devora and buried it past keeper Christian Hutchinson for the goal, 1-0 San Eli. It's very surprised because I never like shoot and never like made a goal. So I shoot and it came through the goal and made a goal. Just kicking, fire, having fun and being very positive and calm. World class goal. God, I'm so proud of him for taking that shot. You know, he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore, and you know what? That that takes guts to take a shot like that. A lesser young man would have passed that ball, would have given that responsibility to somebody else. I, can, I cannot even describe it. It's very awesome making that goal. Sometimes it's just that simple. San Eli with the lead, but Palestine wasn't about to give up. 20th minute, 51 yard free kick by the Wildcats, but Salice read it perfectly in traffic and made the stop. San Eli held the lead at halftime, 40 minutes away from another golden trapezoid, but it wouldn't be that easy. 44th minute, Leonor passed through traffic right to Abraham Nunez, but he can't find the ball and it scooted wide of danger. Moments later, Easton Musso shot just wide of the mark. 51st minute, the Eagles nearly got the insurance to put the match away. Long pass in, but the Eagles couldn't poke check it past the keeper. The bad news was San Eli never got the insurance mark. The good news was, thanks to Salais and the lack of Palestine discipline, they didn't need it. The Eagles drew four Wildcat yellow cards in the match's final 23 minutes as desperation forced Palestine into mistakes. 61st minute, free kick off a San Eli yellow card, but Salais punched away the 
the kick, Chuck Norris style. 64th minute, Louis Rangel shot from the far side, stopped by the keeper again. 73rd minute, free kick for Palestine, but Salai said no goal for you. I make a lot of saves. Thanks to my team. They block every shot. He was pressuring me to do better. He always practiced with us so he could do better and make it to state. What Steve does very, very well is he manages his whole area. I don't even have words. It's, it's great having my team, my family. Sanelli's defense survived the 23-minute barrage and handed Palestine their first loss of the season, their first shutout since January 2017, and their first shutout loss since the 2015 4A quarterfinals. And oh yeah, they won the state championship. joining the 1999 Colleyville Heritage Girls as the only soccer teams to not allow a single goal in the knockout rounds. About the only question was, who would the MVP be? No one scored more than one goal in the final four, plus Salais made all the stops, but it was the state championship winning goal of Martin Rodriguez that gave him the award. Three years ago, the Eagles ran around the pitch in the pouring rain to celebrate the title. This year, they didn't run around the pitch, but they went into the stands. Four years ago, San Elizario had no state championships. Now they have six, including two in soccer. We told Steve, you're gonna make saves in the championship game. Palestine's too good, and he is waiting to make saves. Really, I think he might have had five saves in all the other games combined. Today, he might have had 20. Manager Max Sevenfield went up into the stands, but not to fight, but to celebrate. Can I adopt you? Okay. It feels very good, very proud. Every, every time we practice at the sun, at the cold, I'm very proud. It's the best. He's the best coach in the world. We talk about the 4,500 miles we have to drive to get here. There's a lot of bonding that goes on. I think we have something special. I think those trips really, really do something for this team. It's an advantage. And I know that uh, it'd be nice to sleep in our own beds, but our team is connected. The theme of the 2018 San Elizario soccer team was win by team as four different players scored goals at the semifinals and finals in Georgetown. But hey, it's the same result for Max Seppenfield and the Eagles, another golden trapezoid. I'm Greg Sherman.